in the blessed care of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, praise God. Praise God. Are those hands so weak that they cannot be clapped in the presence of the Lord? The strong hands can clap. The not so strong hands can clap. The weak hands can clap. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. I don't know what God has done for you, but I know what he has done for me. You don't know what God has done for me, but you know what he has done for you. And for that reason, we are in his presence to worship him in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him, not maybe now, but must worship him in spirit and in truth. There are many who are worshiping him in spirit, but they don't have the truth. And because they are worshipping him in spirit or with a true heart, in the fullness of time, he's going to lead them to the truth so that they will be able to worship him both in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Why that name? There is no other name for me to greet you in. There is no other name for salvation. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men. Whereby we must be saved. So if we want to get the attention of the full Godhead. Just mention the name Jesus. Don't call on Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They don't exist. They will not answer. It's a non-existent God that Rome has messed us up with. Call on Jesus. When you call on Him, you call on the Father. When you call on Him, you call on the Son. And when you call on Him, you call on the Holy Ghost. For in him dwelleth all, not some, of the fullness of the Godhead bodily, that's at the incarnation. And ye are complete in him, not them, but in him, which is the head of all principalities and power. Please accept greetings from Bishop Devon Brown and Pastor Devon Williams. Ministers of the Bethel United Church of Jesus Christ Apostolic in Stony Hill, Brooksley Road, and Temple Hall, respectively. Please accept greetings also from Sister Trisha Green, my wife. You would have been here, but unforeseen circumstances, she couldn't make it with me today. But by faith, one of the times she will be here. The word of God is a lamp unto my feet, and it's a light unto my path. So, without the word, I can stumble and fall because I am not seeing anything. The word is so important that it's lightened unto a man who was seen in the daylight. Broad daylight in the hot sun with a lit lantern searching for something in the bushes. Sir, why are you searching in the bushes seeing that you have the midday sun? His answer was, 
I'm looking for a honest man. So, the light of this world is Jesus. This world presents the light of Satan, which turns out to be darkness. So when we are salvaging for souls, we can't use the light that Satan gives, because his light is darkness. You have got to take the lantern of the world and search to find more and more of Jesus Christ. Praise God. I'm going to ask Pastor Bishop Barrett to come back here and pray a short prayer. That God will bless the word in Jesus' name. Amen. The topic will be the test of your faith. That Father, we acknowledge you because you're God and there's none other. Lord God Almighty, you've called men. Hallelujah. And put in them your spirit. You're putting them, dear God Almighty. Oh God, the, the gift to make known the mystery of your word. Father, as minister, stand, dear God, not on his behalf, but on your behalf. I pray that the anointing of God, the fire of God, the open doors in the heaven, hallelujah. Oh God, will open unto him, pour into him revelation, inspiration. Let the people hear oh, what the Lord said and accept it, dear God. Father, we thank you now for what you're about to say to us. We receive it with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Daniel chapter 3. Verse 1 to about verse 11. Soon as you find it, you can shout Amen. Praise God. Test of your faith. If your faith must be tested and tried, it is the faith that will take us to heaven. If the Lord sees a faith that is not tested, then it can be a sham. It is something not real. Not any and any faith can take one to heaven, so it has to be tested, proven, and tried. I guess you found it. Amen. Amen. Nebuchadnezzar, chapter 3, verse 1. The king made an image of gold. See the quality of it? What? Whose height was three score cubits and the breadth there of six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. What a place. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And these included the three Hebrew children. Then the princes, the governors and captains, the judges, the treasurers and the counselors the sheriffs and all the rulers of the provinces are gathered together unto the dedication of the image of the, that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Hear an important cry now, idolatry. Then an the herald cried aloud. Why should not we cry aloud? Idolatry is now about to cry aloud. To you it is commanded, O oh people, nations, and languages. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you think you're out of this? You're making a sad mistake, so he thinks. Because they were a part of this kingdom. That at the time he hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, Sapba, sultry, dulcimer, and all kinds of music. He shall fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king 
and set up. And whosoever falleth not down and worship shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fire furnace. Therefore at that time when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, subject, sub, and such, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the, the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Wherefore at that time certain Chaldeans came and accused the Jews. They answered and said to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. He's dead a long time. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, Psaltery and Dulcimer, all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. But also falleth not down and worship it, that he should be cast into the midst of the burning fire, fire furnace. The test of your faith. Praise God. This is the test of your faith. Israel would often time reject God and when God is rejected his presence departs from them and he would allow the heathen to come and to have their way with them to the point on which God permits Perhaps they would have been allowed to kill even some, but not all. Because Israel, according to Bible prophecy, is a part of God's plan for the end times. So at different times, Israel would fall in idolatry. And we know that God hates idolatry. He said in Deuteronomy 6 verse 4, Hear, O Israel. In today's language, you would say, Hear, O church, the Lord our God is one Lord. And today we call him Jesus. We call him the Rose of Sharon. We call him the Prince of Peace. But I call him Jesus, my rock. Jesus, my rock. Jesus, 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 Jesus. I call him Jesus, my rock. We have no time for idolatry. Because idolatry will lead us no other place but the lake of fire and brimstone. For we know that the Son of God is come. And hath given us an understanding that we might know him that is true. Mighty God in Christ. And we are in him that is true. Even in his son Jesus Christ. Hear this. This is the true God. And eternal life. And verse 21 says. Little children keep yourselves from idols. So any God outside of the Lord Jesus Christ is an idol. Amen. Nebuchadnezzar did not know this true God, even although he heard about the works of God in Israel. Though he did not see those equivalent works in his own province because he was serving the wrong God. And it's as simple as that. Now, Nebuchadnezzar had his qualification for those he wanted in his kingdom. Now, chapter 1 says, In the year, in the third year of the reign of Jeroikim, king of Judah came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand which part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, not the true God, but his God. 
and he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. Now, if we want the true and living God to be, to be victorious, all you have got to do is to take the anointed vessels where idolatry reigns. And at some point, God himself will rise up. When Philistia got a hold of the Ark of the Covenant of God, and they took the Ark throughout Philistia, the Bible makes it plain as to the things that happened to them. All kind of crosses happened to them. So they had to take the ark and put it, attach it to chariots of horses and cars rather and send them back to where they belong. So idolatry may prevail over the true God but only for a time. Because what God often does, he gives the devil season to prove that he is God over the true God. And when the fullness of time comes and he fails to prove it, then God just suddenly snapped his rope and said, it's my time now. So keep all the vessels in the house of your God, all you want. In the fullness of time, I'm going to take them out and bring them back into the temple of God where they belong. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring a certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. That was man's qualification. But in the days of Belshazzar, Daniel had another qualification. He had that of an excellent spirit, which Darius saw. The princes in, Dan, in Darius's reign had the same qualifications, children in whom was no blemish. But what God is of interest is of interest to God is spiritual qualification in the name of humility, on one in whom dwells an excellent spirit. So irrespective of the fact that you may be educated or not, you may be skillful in that or in this or not, God placed you here at such a time as this because you are of an excellent spirit and this is what the Lord Jesus Christ wants. Amen. To ensure that as the true God he prevails sooner or later against the world of idolatry. Amen. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank. So nourishing them three years. That at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. For he gave unto Daniel the name of Belshazzar, and unto Hananiah of Mish Shadrach, and of Mish Mishael of Meshach, and of Azariah of Abednego. But Daniel determined to stand out. I'm with the crowd, but I won't be like the crowd. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. Nor with the wine with he drunk, 
Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not define himself thereof. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. He fell in tender love and favor with them because an excellent spirit was seen in him. Which is the reason why nothing happened to him. He prevailed and he soared above all and was recognized over all those other idolatrous princes in the idolatrous kingdom. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king. Alright, verse 12. Prove thy servant, I, pre I beseech thee, ten days. Not three years now. Ten days. Three years? No, our oh God can't wait so long. Ten days. Mighty God, Revelation said, ye shall have tribulation ten days. And I will give you a crown of life. So prove God's children ten days. Your 10 days might be a year. It might be a literal 10 days. It might be 5 years. Prove the children of God. 10 days. And in the end, you shall have tribulation 10 days and I will give you a crown of life. Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, 10 days and let them give us a pulse to eat and water to drink. Something that may not be too nice. But Daniel was not about the diet of men which looked good. He was about the diet of God. Even when we partake of God's diet, it may be sour in the mouth, but it's sweet in the stomach. Now, what came from the table of the king? Physically it was okay, but it had an idolatrous connotation about it because it came from the worship of a false god. Daniel decided not to defile himself with the royal nations, which included meat that may not have been drained of blood, as required by Jewish law, or that was or that was likely often used as ritual offering to the Babylonian god Marduk and his divine son Nebo. So we see what Daniel was running from. It looks good, I guess it tastes good, but I cannot partake of it. The Bible says, let us look at it quickly in Colossians 2, 21 to 23 Colossians 2 21 to 23 from verse 20 wherefore if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of this world. Why as though living in the world are ye subject to ordinances? Look at verse 21. Touch not. Taste not. Handle not. Which are to perish with the using after the commandments and traditions of men. Which things have indeed a show of wisdom in will worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor of the satisfying of the flesh. So Daniel in the spirit realized that he could not partake of the meal that was sent by Nebuchadnezzar. So he said, prove us 10 days. Pulse is zero which according to the enhanced Strong's lexicon is literally transfer, translated vegetables. Pulse in this context has typically been said to mean lentils, chickpeas, or some sort of legume or seed type food. The definition for vegetable enlarges considerably 
when God defines what is good. In other words, that is to say that whenever God sets the table before you, you are to eat whatever he sets because in the fullness of time, he's going to enlarge the diet. So some of the time, when we sit at the master's table, we partake of things that does not taste so good. My mom came to our room one night, in the dead of the night, with something mixed with sugar, I'm not sure if salt was in it, with some kind of mixture that would have turned your stomach. But she knew what she was doing. I do not know if it was to kill worms, or she heard me gnashing my teeth in the night, or what. But she tried several times for me to partake of it, and I couldn't. And she just turned away in frustration, went to the door and said, alright, 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 come. And she turned it, got to the skull pit quickly, and saw that it before I threw up. She knew what she was doing. So, the table of God demands that something on the table is not to our suiting, but rest assured that once you partake of it, you surely shall not throw up. If anything that we are to throw up is things partake is things pertaining to the table of devils where we accidentally find ourselves at times sitting there and we eat those things we ask the Lord to cleanse us. So, Nebuchadnezzar, I'm sorry. I can't sit at your table because you're serving the wrong God. The wrong king. Whatever you are preparing, it's death in the pot. It might taste good, but spiritually, it's unhealthy for the spiritual man. Watch the diet of the wicked one. You may get strong and do the work, but spiritually, you are dying. So it's time to shift yourself from the table of devils and find yourself around the table of the Lord you will be royally treated the Lord will take off you the old robe and clothe you with the robe of righteousness and once you are proven with the pulse and the water then it will be time for you to be tried in the fiery furnace but you first must be proven ten days with the pulse. Hallelujah. Ten days. Hallelujah. If you want to come up higher in Jesus, pass through his ten days. Hallelujah. His ten days will not end before, and it will not go beyond the ten days. Yes. Sit at his table. And prove yourself the ten days. And eat of his pulse. A part of the pulse is the seed. Eat of the seed of the word. And when it is sown in your life, it won't remain a seed for too long. It will develop because it is a seed that has life. When you eat a natural seed, you're eating something that is dead. So it passes through the drought, into the pit. But when you eat of the living word, you're eating of the life. Which one out there is going to eat a chicken when it's life? I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but when Jesus set the meat on his table, everything that is there is living. Life and that more abundantly. Jesus. So you eat of the word. Get it into our system. And it begins to operate. 
So the pulse operates and turns into something better than the pulse. So what takes three years to prove itself in others? Took ten days with God with the feeding of the pulse on the water to show a change. Years ago I was very sick to the point where here look droopy and I have to slightly part my legs to keep my balance. So some of the saints were wondering if David is going to make it. I was very sick. I would say in a sense that almost we never met. It looked like I was about to die on my dad. And in the fullness of time, the appetite came back and I ate down the whole place. Within 10 days, nothing was showing as yet. It, took, it takes time. But when we are dealing with God, time doesn't matter to Him. It didn't have to be 10 days. It could have been 24 hours. So, when God gives us the 10 days, don't miss a meal. If you miss a meal, then you will not be proven. Eat of life and that more abundantly morning, noon and night. So these men were proven the king's table might be considered of daily rations of here the delicacies now. Meat, fish, perhaps it garlic, escovitch, and name it. Lamb, fowl, such as chicken, honey, the sweet meat, barley, dates. Have I eat a date? Date is equivalent to prune. Yes. You eat one, you can't Can stop. No. This looks good. But spiritually, we will not be addicted to it because it's evil. It might taste good, but I don't want it. It's in sacrifice to the Babylonian god Marduk and his divine son Nebu. That's idolatry. This is where a little of the Trinity was forming from back then about father and son. Marduk and his son Nebu. People today talking about father, son and holy ghost. That's idolatry. Speak it as it is. If they are vexed, they are vexed. Little children, keep yourself from idols. Keep ourselves from the meals of idols. Because if you eat of idolatrous meals, you are an idolater in the name of Jesus Christ. So, we prove ourselves before we get into the trial. Now, let us move on back to chapter 3. We had stopped at verse 11. For this cause, the king was angry and very furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. But my Bible, when I looked into this verse, while there were few, he was furious and very angry. These three Hebrew children, we don't know where Daniel was at the time. They stood calm as a cucumber, cool as a cucumber. And with that peace, they were able to subdue the anger of idolatry. They decided that they were not going to bow. Their times with silence can do the same thing that noise does. God is not only a God of noise, but he's also God of silence at times. Silence. You are sleeping. A box is playing on the road. Suddenly, it wakes you up. 
Where I was living as a child, they had the prayer box preventing us from sleeping. Eventually, I got used to it and I fell asleep. Suddenly, I woke up and there was silence. What possibly happened is, because I was already used and accustomed to the noise, the sudden silence took the place of the blaring noise. So the silence woke me up. My God, the thunder and silence of our prayer. We can use a thunderous prayer and defeat the wicked one. But there is a silence of prayer that can also defeat the wicked one. Anna realized that can't conceive. So she went down to the temple and prayed, whispering. And all Samuel saw. And holy orders. Silence of prayer opened the room in the fullness of time and Samuel Eli Rother was such a backslid high priest he could not tell the difference between when somebody was drunk in the flesh from being drunk in the spirit so this woman, this woman came with godly silence and she cried out unto God. Her adversary Penina always came with noise and provoked her story that she cried and wept. And oftentimes when I guess would cry and weep silently when she visited the house of God. Down on my knees. When trouble rise, how it goes? I talk to Jesus and then I heard her hear down on my knees. How the rest of I promise him that I will serve him. I will serve him down on my knees. And I say, I promise you that I will give him back to you. All the days of our lives. So these men stood and allowed the other boroughs to bow as soon as the psaltery, the harp, and the dulcimer, and all of that sounded. They stood still and sung silently. Lady of the valley is my lord, sweet rose of Sharon. He's my Lord, he's all together lovely. He's my Lord, he's coming back in glory. He's my Lord. And they encourage themselves silently. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Silence in worship. The king was angry, so he now calls them up. At least he's a man of principle. And the decree went forth that the wise men should slay. No. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. At least he's a man of principle. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true? O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Do ye not serve my gods? Now worship the golden image which I have set up. Nebuchadnezzar, we serve one God with one name. And that's the truth that is looking you dead in the face, like it or not. The truth hurts, but it is still the truth. And if you be ready at what time you hear the cornet, that, 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 at the time of May, and I have said, which ye shall fall down and worship the image which I have made. But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning fire furnace. Here will it face the self now. And who is that God? 
that shall deliver you out of my hands. You're going to find out now who is God. Nebuchadnezzar, your God is no God. Our God is the right God. He's God from death is past. And he shall always be God. So anything that raises up itself against him in the heaven, kicks it out. Yes. <laughs> Lucifer said, I will be like the most high. Kick him out. No time for it at all. Jesus said, I saw Satan as lightning fall from heaven. As fast as lightning God, hit the, the earth. Drop you with the idolatrous faithfulness. God has no equal. To whom then will he like me? Or shall I be equal? Say the Holy One. No Holy Two or Holy Three. Holy One of Israel. For great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Praise God. All right, we are rich now. We are not careful to answer in this matter. Amen. The Holy Ghost that we have teaches us respect. So, King, we have to respect you. But rest assured, we don't have no respect for your God. Because the devil who has turned out to be the God of this world, God took him out and threw him out headlong straight to this earth and he set him for another demotion when he will be thrown from the earth to the lake of fire and brimstone. But if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fire furnace. And he will he will Deliver us of, out of thine hand. Okay. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king. Here is a piece of information that we want you to saturate and have digest into your system. And if you allow it to digest, it has enough power to kick out idolatry of you. And what we are going to tell you now is the world. We can't help you. Only the world can help you. And we're going to put the world in you. Keep that idolatry out. Jesus. With the verses. 17. Our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fire furnace. And he will deliver us out of the hand of king. But if it not, but if not, be it known unto thee, hear the truth now. Swallow this whether you want to or not. O king, that we will not serve thy gods. She can hardly serve the one God who I have much more serve than God. We will not serve Marduk and Nebo. That's too many, and they can't deliver us anyhow. No, worship the golden image with no set up. There was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed. Against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to heat. And the Bible says, evil shall slay the wicked. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in the army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fire furnace. And these men were bound in their coats, their hosen and their hats and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fire furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot. Yeah, all right, here, he's going to say the wicked now. The flame of the fire slew those men 
that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Evil shall slay the wicked. It's written in the word. So when they prepare the fire for you, and they're going to cast it there, you end up there and you're okay. And when you look outside, you see them carcass. Evil shall slay the wicked. Amen. And feast him and shadow up Mishak and Abednego fell down into the midst of the burning fire. fiery furnace. Mighty God in Christ. Now, <laughs> against Second Chronicles 36, <laughs> verse 6. Against him came up Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and bound him with fetters. That's where the chains. Second Chronicles 3, verse 11. Wherefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the host of the king of Assyria, which took Manasseh among the thorns and bound him with fetters. That's metal, not rope. Luke 8, 29, and he come. For he has commanded the unclean spirits to come out of, man, of, of, out of the man, for oftentimes he had caught him and kept him bound with chains and fetters. That's metal. Jude 16, 21. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters. That's metal. Not wrong, no. Second Samuel 3, 34. Thy hands were not bound nor thy feet put with fetters to bind their kings with chains and nor with fetters of iron and they be bound in fetters 